All right, Shakespeare monkeys be damned. These words are going to come out of my mouth on purpose. Kudos to Iran. Now, let me start immediately walking that back. Progress in gender equality in Iran is like potty training. So when I praise them, it's going to be because they didn't get all the shit on their leg. But there are a number of important incremental steps toward equality going on there, and that puts them ahead of a lot of their neighbors. The big one, which you've probably heard about by now, was the hijabless photos Iran's president posted of late great mathematician Maryam Marzakani. And this chick, whose name I apologize for probably butchering, was an absolute intellectual powerhouse. She's one of the most brilliant mathematicians in a generation and remains the only woman to win a Fields Medal. When she died at the depressingly young age of 40, President Hassan Rouhani posted a tribute picture of Mirzakhani, which prompted state-run newspapers to break with the country's strict rules about naked ladyheads. And again, a lot of the poop is still missing the toilet, but that's definitely a step in the right direction. Be the most intelligent woman in the history of your academic field, and at least they'll let you show your heathenous lady hair. But there's more good news on the hijab front as well. According to a recent story in The Guardian, increasingly popular protests are forcing Iranian officials to reconsider the scope of their anti-scout pornography laws in the first place. See, a growing number of women are refusing to wear head coverings while they're driving. Uh, Perhaps they feel like modesty is less important than peripheral vision or something. Or perhaps they just feel modesty can go fuck itself. But whatever the impetus, there definitely seems to be a sea change going on because the Iranian government's response has not been cover your head up or I'll chop it off, you filthy whore. In fact, to the contrary, Iran's president is arguing that cars should be treated as private space, allowing women a legal means to see their side mirrors even after a sneeze. And while we're on the theme of good news for gals in the Middle East, let me be the first to tell you, unless somebody already told you, that an all-girls robotic team from Afghanistan that was originally denied entry into the U.S. because our president is a testicle blister is now approved to compete in the robotics meet. Because apparently, after consideration, we agreed that 15-year-old nerds probably weren't a threat to our national security. But lest I leave you feeling like we might be making progress in the world, I want to close on a story that will remind you just how 15th century some parts of the world still are. This comes to us via the New York Times and to me via astute listener Erica. And it's about a woman who lives in Nepal. Or at least lived in Nepal. Until she died of a snake bite. Now, most of the time, that wouldn't be a fatal kind of thing necessarily. But unfortunately for Tulasi Shahi, she was menstruating which meant nobody was allowed to be near her or touch her, apparently even when she was dying. So now that everybody's super clear on just how potty trained the world isn't, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.